Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to run a parallel lines regression. The data is uh, comes from apartments in the Madison area. We're looking at rent as the y variable, square footage as a quantitative predictor variable, and location is a binary variable. Only two locations, the south side of Madison and the west side of Madison. In order to run the parallel lines regression, I'll have to recode this location variable into an indicator variable with uh, numbers coded zeros and ones. So I'll insert a column at D, right click on D, insert. Let's make a new variable called West. This uh, variable gets the number zero when it's a south side apartment, and it gets the number one when it's a west side apartment. So it indicates whether the location is west coded 1 or south coded 0. Now to run the regression, the parallel lines regression, uh, we'll use these two variables as predictors and this as the response. Go to data, data analysis, regression, the y range is rent, include the label, the x range, is square footage and west. Check the box labels. Let's put the output right here in G3. And we won't do anything with residual analysis. Press OK. Here's my regression output. I'll uh, clean this up a little bit by stretching out column G. Let's uh, eliminate all of this confidence interval output just to have a little bit cleaner stuff. And I'll code, I'll format all the numbers to three decimal places so we don't have information overload. Uh, let's rename a few of these statistics. I'll abbreviate adjusted R squared. I'll abbreviate standard error. Uh, let's abbreviate coefficients here and standard error is of the coefficients. And in the ANOVA table here, this is p-value for the f-test. And why not uh, format these sums of squares and mean squares? Let's have a comma separator and no decimal places. Looks a little better. Okay. Um, technically, I think we could go to two decimal places on some of these numbers. So let me format these coefficients to only two decimal places. Looks a little better. Now, based on this output, I see from these coefficients the equation, the best fitting equation, according to the method of least squares, looks like this. From this output, I can tell uh, that west side apartments are significantly higher priced than south side apartments, according to the p-value, and we estimate by $61.33, uh, given the apartment sizes are the same, holding square footage constant. And then for uh, the coefficient for square footage, that is a significant variable also. And for each square foot larger these apartments are holding location constant, uh, we expect rent to be about 60 cents higher. Now we can break this equation. This one equation is really two separate equations. So let me break it up into its two separate parts here. The south side line is really, uh, you put in zero for west, and this term disappears. And then for the west side line, we put in 1 here for the variable uh, west. And that means you're going to add like terms. You're shifting the intercept by $61.33. So the new intercept, which has added the shift and the south side intercept together, and it gives me this new intercept of $205.04. Sense. 
there we go. And uh, we have different intercepts, but same slopes. So this represents parallel lines. The fit is decent. R squared is just under 67%. In other words, 67% of the variability in rent is explained by uh, size of the apartments and its location. And then we also have a typical error of $106.62. In other words, if we use this equation to try to predict rents, we can expect to be off by about $107 on average. Okay, so that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll show you how you can graph these two equations into a fitted line plot.